In this next video, I'm going to be sharing my 10 favorite time saving tips and tricks in Excel to make you more efficient and productive. There's a link to the file in the description below if you want to follow along. Otherwise, let's get into it. Tip number one, shortcut sum. So we have a table here that has product sales for each region and I want to get the sum of all products for the North region. So I can enter in the sum formula and just select all of my column there and hit return and that will give me the answer. That's a little bit slow and laborious. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select Alt and plus and then that's the shortcut sum function. Now I can do it for one column, but I can also do it for all of the columns together. So hit Control and plus and you can see then it will sum all of those columns there. Now I can also sum all of the rows. So if I select all of the totals on the rows and hit Alt and plus, I can get my sum there as well. And what we can also do is we can get the sum of both the horizontal and the vertical totals by selecting the full region, including where you want to total, and then just hitting Alt and plus, and that will sum it up as well. Tip two, pay special formulae. So here we have a table with numbers and they're all rounded to the nearest million. But what if I wanted to change the number format and just get it back to the exact dollar? Well, one way I could do that would be to add an extra helper column where I would put 1 million here, and then I would multiply that by each of the cells. I'd have to actually put a relative reference on E5, so I could just drag that down, and that would give me my answer. But that's a little bit slow and tedious. So another quicker way to do that is just to select our 1 million, copy that, and then select the data that you want to change and then your shortcut for paste special values is alt e s and then what we want to do is we just want to multiply that down here under, under the operation and hit ok and then that will format the cells like so tip number three fill in the blanks so we have a table here with has sales for each of the products and it's by region but you can see that the region field is only populated for the first product. So we want to actually populate that for each of the products so that it's more like a table. So what we can do is if we select the full range, then we go and press F5, go down to special, and then we want to select all blank cells just there on that radio button and then hit OK. Then we'll go up to the formula bar, go equals, put it up to the cell above the first cell there and hit control and enter and hey presto it all magically just appears tip number four flash fill so what can you do with flash fill well it's a feature in excel that allows you to automatically fill in values based on patterns in your data let's see how it works in this first column here we've got names which is surnames and first names so what about if we just wanted to pull out the surname into each of these names so if i was to type in brown and then use the flash fill key, which is control and E. You can see that it will automatically detects what kind of data I want to pull. I can also rearrange how I want the data to be. So if I was to put in John Brown, return and do my control and E, it flash fills down with the first name and then the surname. What we can also do is we can use flash fill to join two separate columns together as well. So if I was to paste in the name John Brown and then do control and E, you can see it would concatenate or join those two columns together based on the selection above. Tip number five, named ranges. So named ranges is a really useful feature in Excel that allows us to sign a name to a cell or a range of cells or a formula in a worksheet to help us better understand how that formula works. So it's really useful when you're sharing your spreadsheets with other people or you've got complicated formula that you need to understand how they work. So let's just go in and have a look how it works. So I've got some sales here and I want to multiply them by a 10% commission. So if I put in the formula equals my sales and then I'm going to multiply that by my 10% commission. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that as an absolute reference because I'm going to drag the formula down. So if I drag that down, you can see then I create my commission for each of the sales. But that's a little bit slow and laborious. There's a better way to do it. So if I assign this cell to a named range, so to do that, I go up to the top left and what I'm going to call this cell is commission and hit return. 
And then when I get down to do this calculation, I can go equals the sales, multiply that by commission tab, and then hit return. And then I can drag that down. And you can see by default, it assigns an absolute reference. And when I go in, I can under understand the formula a little bit better, saying that it's B6 multiplied by commission. We can also assign a range of sales to a named range. So here I've got Q1 to Q4 sales. So I'm going to select all of the range there, and then I'm going to go to the top under formulae and then create from selection. Up here, I'm going to say that includes the top row and hit OK. Now, if I want to see that named range, I can simply hit the F3 button and that will give me all of my named ranges currently in play. You can see that I have my Q1 sales down to my Q4 sales. So let's actually put this all together. Here I've got a little table down below where I've got sales and quantity. So let's assign a named range to the sales by selecting that up to the create from selection and hit OK. And let's create one also for quantity. So create from selection and then hit OK. And then to enter in my total formula, I can just go equals sales multiplied by quantity and hit return and you can see that pre-populates everything so really useful tip tip number six 3d sum now let's say you want to sum all of the product sales for each month so we have january here and we want to sum the january sales for product a b and c so we could do that the slow and an efficient way by actually going into each tab selecting each cell and then adding it on to the next product so then just finally just into product C and hit return but that's slow and inefficient so what we're going to do instead is use the 3d sum function so if I just delete that for the moment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go equals and I'm going to select my first cell to include in my 3d sum so that's going to be my product a sheet and cell c4 now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this final quotation out of here and I'm going to put in a colon and then I'm going to select my final sheet which is my product seat sheet and then from there I'm going to take out my quotation marks before my product C as well so I should just have quotation marks at the start and at the end of the product C and then I just need to delete one of my exclamation marks as well now what I need to do is I need to wrap this reference around a sum and then close my parentheses in there and hit return and effectively what that's done is it's added all the sales between the product a sheet and the product c sheet and what we can do we can just drag that all the way down now the real efficiency within this formula is that if we were to add in a new product in between a and c it would automatically pick up within the new formula here. So for instance, if we were to create a copy of sheet B, and let's say rename that to product B, and let's change the sales so that we can really see the difference. So let's put that in as 10,000 there. In our sum total, we can see that's added all the way through overall. So a really useful formula to be efficient. Tip number seven, data validation. So data validation is a feature in Excel that allows users to define certain rules or constraints so that we can limit what users can enter into various cells. So for instance, if I wanted just to be able to enter in the months of the year into cell E4, I can use a list to do that. So let's go in and select that cell. We'll then go up to data and then up to data validation, or we can use the shortcut key alt a v v and what we want to do in here is we want to have it as a list and then our source data is all of the products here on the left so just select that range and then hit ok and you can see then that creates a nice usable list there but we can also limit what users type into various cells as well so for instance if we were to put in a formula in here which would only allow entry of dates between specific dates if i was to go alt a v v 
This time I'm going to allow just a date. I'm going to be between and the start date is going to be 1st of January 2023. And my end date is going to be 1st of January 2024. And then I'm going to have an error alert to say stop. You can only enter in dates between the 1st of the 1st 23 and the 1st of the 1st 24 and hit OK. So if a user was to go in and just to type in a random number, they would get an error message saying it needs to be between these two dates. Tip number eight, rearrange rows and columns. So say, for instance, I wanted to move this column here south and I wanted to put it in just after west. Well, I could do that the slow way by just inserting a column into there, moving this column over to the right and then potentially just deleting this column here. But we don't want to do that. We want to be more efficient than that. So if you select the range that you want to move and then hover your mouse just over the line and you can see that the mouse icon changes to a black arrow. And then if we hold our shift and our left mouse button, we can just kind of move that range into its new place. We can also do this for rows as well. So if I select my product B and then I hover my mouse over so that it changes to the black arrows, hold down my shift and my left mouse button. I can just move that up and it changes overall. So XLOOKUP is one of the newer lookup functions that have been added to Excel and Excel 365. So it effectively replaces VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and index match. I'll link a video up the top of the screen if you want to know more about that, where I've got a video where I go into it in a little bit more depth. But for here, we're just going to go through simply how it works. So here I've got a table with store number, store name and sales and so on. And what I want to do is I want to find the store number knowing the store name. So I can use XLOOKUP to do that. So equals XLOOKUP tab. Our lookup value is going to be our store number. Hit our comma. Our lookup array is going to be where are we looking for that store number. So that's in the store number column here. Hit comma again. And then what is the results that we want to find? We want to find our store name. So we'll just select the store name column. Close our parentheses and hit return. And we can see that that's the Hong Kong store. XLOOKUP also works to the left, which is something you can't do with VLOOKUP. So if we just give an example of region, we want to find the store number. Again, we want to find that within the store number array. But this time we want to find which region the store is in here. So if I close my second parentheses and hit return, you can see it's within the Asia region. Tip number 10, sum if count if. So I can use sum if count if formula to sum or count based on a specific criteria. So in this example here, I've got another table, which is store sales by region. And what I want to do is I want to find the sum of the sales for the North America region. So I can use sum if to achieve that. So if I equals sum if, first argument is my range. So where is that criteria that I want to find? So that is within the region. So that's within column B, hit comma. My criteria is my North America region. And then comma again, my sum range is I want to find the sales within the North America. Close my second brackets and hit return. And I can see that that seems to be right, 968. Count if is very similar. So if I equals count if, got two arguments. The first is my range. So again, this is my region. So I select that comma, and then I just need to select the region that I'm counting, which is North America. Close my brackets and hit return. So I can see, yeah, there's two stores within the North America region. I hope you found that useful. If you learned anything, or indeed, if you want to share any tips and tricks, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next video.